were making me crying, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I'm almost 40. Uh, uh, I, I told you I study uh, young, young therapy, and I know it's, it's strategic therapy, but no, it's single session therapy, solution focused on that. But as you say, um, you're not saying that uh, don't, we have not to study uh, a method because as you say the methods the approach gives you the structure you know you saying if if you understood if you have if you want to improve you have one to uh, monitor your 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 outcomes and your mm -hmm. progress and to um, be engaged in uh, deliberate practice right mm -hmm. uh, you know um, um, you remind me um, what Freud Sigmund Freud said when he came in the uh, USA, uh, you know, that he said um, with uh, Carl Jung and Sandor Franks on the ship, he said, mm. they don't know we are bringing them the plague, no, you know, mm. for, for the first cycle of um, uh, psychotherapy, uh, psychoanalysis in, um, in USA. Uh, mm. Well, it's not the right time to talk about plague, but um, I hope mm. the listeners will forgive me. Uh, mm. Because um, what you and people um, engaged in uh, fit and in Rome um, um, are, are saying is something that we have to change our mindset. First of all, we have to change the, um, the faith. You, your article you sent me, very interesting, is uh, the title is something like uh, losing the faith. No? And mm. you explain this kind mm. of things. And so what's what are the um, implementation issues? What are the um, greatest difficulties you are, um, you and people in the field are uh, facing in trying to uh, help therapists to implement uh, fit and uh, deliberate practice? Mm -hmm. uh, at, at each turn, in this developmental path, I, I have been reminded of and embarrassed by my naivete that solution focused would somehow lead to better outcomes, that monitoring was the end that, that we needed, the end thing we needed to do. And I honestly thought that when we started to see the results of monitoring and deliberate practice that on hearing this, people would say, oh yeah, of course, very naive, naive at multiple levels that ideas change people and they don't. Context changes and people catch up to the changing context. Demands change and people catch up to the demands. And more, there is a, it is a big leap from my model is what informs my work to I need to push my performance if I want to get better. It's a, it's a huge leap. So what is the biggest barrier? Time. Semmelweis, you'll remember, had a realization 150 years ago that the women dying in the Austrian hospitals during childbirth probably weren't dying from the popular theory of the day, the medical theory of the day, the one supported by the medical establishment that there was an, a, a dangerous, invisible, poisonous gas called a miasma that wafted into the wards and caused everyone to fall sick. So that was the science of the day. That's what people were trained to do. And what did Semmelweis find out? Well, he made the connection between physicians doing autopsies and then helping women give birth without having washed their hands. And he comes up with what seems like a simple idea that if you washed your hands, the women stopped dying. And in fact, when he did that, when he instituted that policy, the death rate plummeted. What happened? Well, you know what happened. He was basically driven out of the country and put into an insane asylum. It, it was He was so crazy. Now, 
maybe he was too passionate an advocate but nowadays no one would say eh, hand washing silly when i go to see my dentist or my physician if they don't wash their hands in front of me i tell them to wash their hands that's how that's how this has changed but as you know if you visited any restroom and watched people after they use the, the use the toilet many don't I watch them walk right by me and out and I think oh my god you know they're touching the door ah you know I'm not afraid of germs I'm afraid of ignorance and what that leads to and yet it takes huge amounts of time so 200 150 200 years post semmelweis we still have hand washing issues in many hospitals the failure of the medical staff to wash their hands hygiene failures are one of the leading causes of death how could that be these are educated professionals well the context doesn't demand it what what did they do john provost at john hopkins he decides to empower the other health professionals if they see the physicians walk into a room without washing their hands he said it's okay for the nursing staff whoa somebody that is considered less having less power to speak up and say doctor please wash your hands what happens when he did it plummet it that's fit that's fit that's us saying hey you have to do something about this why would that be so hard with our patients well i think it's hard to get feedback i think it's hard to change our minds we rationalize away the reasons you know i didn't touch anything why do i need to wash my hands i didn't pee on my hands why do i need to wash them after after i've used the the toilet so there needs to be a feedback process but this takes time and the data indicate we actually have a study about this that it takes between 3 and 5 years for people to make the shift to a feedback informed mindset and there are two seems as though there are two primary barriers the first one is trust meaning do i trust this data from my client more than i trust myself now i've framed that of course in terms of doing therapy but think of the person leaving the toilet it's the same thing that somehow whether they trust themselves more than the science you know you should wash your hands but you're not making that decision because you think it's okay the second key barrier are structural barriers institutional barriers so in the countries that i visit and the places i consult if a therapy is not working at some point it makes sense for the treater to say maybe it's a good idea for you to see somebody else or go to another program but there are often barriers in place about that historically therapists tend to view such requests as indicative of client pathology the fact that you want to leave right now is an indication that you're trying to escape my influence and sabotage your progress these kinds of thoughts and the structural barriers which also include wait a minute we have a huge waiting list so if we end here there might not be another therapist to see for 6 to 8 weeks maybe longer those barriers need to be addressed otherwise therapists just don't make the referral so two things again trusting what the data say and learning to work with that data and then secondly dealing with institutional barriers to acting on client feedback in the studies that we have where fit or feedback informed treatment has not worked two issues come up again and again the first one is early stage of implementation they give people 6 hours of training and then they monitor for 6 months and then do the results what do they find fit makes no difference why as i've said it seems to take time to trust the data the second studies for example a study with people who have eating disorders by Annika Davidson found that fit also didn't work but the staff were prohibited from acting on client feedback well having a stopwatch doesn't make you run faster monitoring and measuring is not going to make you more effective you got to monitor 
hear the feedback and act, of course, on the feedback to make a difference. And when those characteristics are there, then outcomes appear to improve.